How's it going everybody and welcome back to another Injustice 2 character analysis where we break down each character and discuss their game plan, their moves, their trait, their strengths, their weaknesses, and how to overcome these characters. Today we'll be discussing Supergirl. Before we begin, I do use advanced terminology that isn't covered in this video, so I'd like to refer you back to my tutorial series if any terminology in this video doesn't make any sense. With that being said, let's get into it. Supergirl makes her presence in the DC Comics through her unkept strength and all-around adaptability. Supergirl, being one of the youngest heroes in DC Comics, is a novice fighter, but still manages to be one of the most powerful characters to fight against. With this in mind, Netherrealm has exemplified this character into Injustice 2 by equipping Supergirl with the means of adapting to any playstyle, making her the perfect all-around character. Supergirl's mobility is arguably the best of all the characters in Injustice 2, and with that ability to control the neutral with her long-ranged normals and her eye lasers, Supergirl becomes a force to fight against for any character in the game. Supergirl is, by definition, a hybrid character. Her strengths lie in her space and aerial control, and her projectile game. I would argue about six parts space control, maybe four parts aerial control. Her playstyle is very simplistic, revolving around forcing the opponent into playing at her pace, and making frequent checks on the opponent's forward progress in the neutral. On top of that, she is respectable in terms of mix-ups and staggering pressure, as well as combo damage. A common source of controversy arises when talking about how good of a character she is. It is undeniable to the highest degree that she is a top 5 character. People know she's good, but what makes her so good? Let's find out. Looking at Supergirl's normals, we see that standing 1 has a decent amount of range and leads into her 1-1-2 and 1-1-up-3 string. Back 1 hits mid and starts up in 9 frames and goes about match start distance. I mean, people complain about Superman's forward 2 range, and this normal goes just as far in the same amount of time and hits mid. Her down 1 is essentially the same as Captain Cold's, but with more combo potential. It hits low and is not too crazy with its range. Her back 2 has pretty stubby range and hits mid, but can be followed up into an overhead string, back 2 throw. Her forward 2 is double hitting, mid, and goes beyond match start distance, with the second hit reaching a little farther than the first. Her down 2 is one of the best anti-airs in the game. The animation essentially places the hitbox of the down 2 as like a dome over Supergirl's hurt box, making it nearly impossible to hit past her down 2 from the air. Her down 3 covers decent range in comparison to most sweeps and is a very strong normal for her. It also starts up pretty fast in comparison to other down 3s. Her jumping normals are exceptionally good, being an aerial control character. Jump 1 starts up in 5 frames and is one of the longest reaching jump 1s in the game, perfect for crossing up out of an air dash. Jump 2 is excellent at starting combos, especially when combined with float cancels, and is exceptionally difficult to anti-air. Jump 3 has really low recovery and is excellent when used mid-combo. Moving on to her strings, she's only limited to about 5 unique strings, making her a very simple character to learn. 1-1-2 is plus 3 on block, and has very good range. It does start off high, but when combined with the down 1 conditioning, it is very possible to get out 1-1-2 during a match. Back 1 leads into back 1-2, which hits low and combos into the breath, and can be ended in back 1-2-3, a good combo ender, or a solid block confirm. Standing 2 leads into a restand string, 2-1-2, or a combo ender, 2-1-2-1-2-1, which looks cool but is never really used due to the high scaling on the string. Back 2, 1 plus 3 is an overhead that is reactable and can be comboed off of when meter burned. You can't get a back 3 off of it without freezing the opponent for an extra bar, but good damage can be achieved off of this string if it were to connect. Her forward 2 normal can be continued into forward 2-3, which launches the opponent and Supergirl into the air, allowing her to do a float cancel, or finish the string with forward 2-3-1, which launches the opponent full screen. Supergirl has only a few special moves, so let's see how they affect her gameplay. Her down back 1 is her DP, and functions as her wake up. Fully punishable, but can be meter burned in order to transition the recovery frames of the DP into her float which can be helpful at avoiding incoming punishes or starting her own combos into the teleport. Then we have her freeze breath, her down forward 2, which can be extended by holding 2. At any level of extension, the breath can be meter burned in order to activate her main combo starting move. Meter burning it will also make it safe on block. Then her iconic down back 2, her teleport. 30 frames of startup, making it slightly reactable. It's better to anticipate it rather than flat out react to it. It crosses up by default, but crosses up high so the ducking it will make it whiff. Meter burning the teleport makes it cross up overhead and will function as another full combo starter. 
Both versions are very punishable at minus 20, and both can be done mid-air. Her Kryptonian Force, back forward 3, functions as like a dash across the screen, which is completely obnoxious in my opinion. It's a dash that can't be whiff punished, nor punished on block, and it has high enough hit priority that it's very difficult to trade with because the hitbox is so large. It's got 20 frames of startup, but as long as you don't do it in your opponent's face, they have to hold this move. It can be meter burn for another combo starter, with the projectile traveling full screen. She also has an air grab that can only be done mid-air, allowing for either a good combo ender or a solid air-to-air -air that can be meter burned for yet another combo starter. She's also equipped with air dashes that provide her mobility and can be used to force good cross-up situations on her opponent. Her super move is extremely stubby but starts up fastest in the game at 5 frames. Supergirl's trait, the Kryptonian lasers, are very simplistic, so this section won't be too long. Her lasers are essentially her zoning tools that are used to keep the opponent in check from multiple angles. On the ground, she can fire a straight shot that hits high, a downward angled shot that hits mid, and a closer version of that. She also has an anti-air shot, which covers a pretty large portion of the top of the screen, but at closer ranges, it's much more beneficial to go with a down two or an aerial straight laser than with her grounded upward laser. Also on the ground, when combined with the meter burn button, her trait turns into a stance that walks her character forward and creates a laser hitbox that covers the entire screen in a straight line directly in front of her. The stance laser hits 5 times and launches the opponent full screen and consumes all of her trait meter, but requires no super meter to use. In the air, her lasers can travel straight, at a downward angle, or at a closer downward angle, or, more obscuredly, can be held mid-air, which is something I've never seen anybody go for. Essentially, if you hold up 4 while mid-air, her character will remain suspended while holding the trait laser until the opponent gets hit by it, ending the move. I don't understand why this move is even here, because not only is it rendered useless by her less expensive and less risky straight shot, it actually drains her character power meter for a brief time after the opponent is hit, which is no good. I wouldn't recommend using this move. On block, her straight ground laser and her anti-air ground laser are plus, at the trade-off of there being an enormous gap between the move she cancels into and the laser. The downward angled lasers and the walking laser are minus 2 and minus 1, meaning it's safe to cancel into the lasers if you wish to stagger certain strings into the lasers. The lasers also function as good combo enders, especially the walking laser, due to its consistently active hitbox lasting over a second and a half. So now that we've looked at all of Supergirl's moves, Let's get into where she struggles and succeeds at. One thing that is glaringly obvious about Supergirl is her lack of any major weakness. I find that a lot of people are almost afraid to come out and acknowledge this, but I think that as of the time of this video being made, Supergirl has no obvious weaknesses that hinder her in any of her matchups. Supergirl succeeds at mobility with her Kryptonian Force and her Air Dash. She succeeds at controlling space with her Down 1, her Back 1, and her Lasers. She succeeds at damage, a typical mid screen BNB from Supergirl does about 30 to 35%. And her setup game is decent. Her forward 3 can be a 50 50 after a hard knockdown, which we'll get into later. Her mix up game is decent. She possesses a good low overhead throw mix up that can be led into combos off of the overhead and the low options. With all of these capabilities combined, Supergirl dictates the pace of any match, whether she faces a zoner, a rushdown character, or even a defensive character. On the negative side, her wake up is not the best. She cannot meter burn the DP after it has been blocked, meaning she's opened up for punishment all the way. She lacks a 6 frame poke, but with all things considered, this isn't too hindering of a weakness. She may not be able to reliably poke out of pressure, but her mobility and her ways of outspacing her opponents to such a high degree makes staying on her to continue your pressure very difficult. Some matchups she does excel in, Supergirl beats the Joker pretty bad. She tends to outfootsie him mid screen and in the air. His counter zoning with his pistol is not very effective when she uses her air projectiles. The Flash struggles against Supergirl primarily because of her mobility. Flash has trouble catching up to Supergirl, ironically enough, and this struggle is compounded by her air lasers. She counters Deadshot pretty well after his recent nerfs. His projectile offense has trouble touching her in the air, and hard reads have to be made with the trick shots that Deadshot cannot afford to be punished for. Supergirl also beats his range on the ground. As you can see, Supergirl's winning matchups are all due to the same thing, her extreme mobility and controlling the neutral with her normals and lasers. What becomes a more difficult question is taking a look at the matchup she loses in, potentially. I say potentially because nobody is certain that this character even has a bad matchup. 
With lots of research and popular opinion that I've had to sift through, I can say that Supergirl's worst matchups come from Brainiac and Starfire. Now whether they're losing matchups or 5-5s is uncertain, but let's take a look at why these characters might cause trouble. Brainiac can rival, and I dare say outplay, Supergirl's aerial mobility. Brainiac's jump one reaches far beyond Supergirl's, and he is able to full combo convert off of a bad air dash from Supergirl. This forces Supergirl to be much more careful, her anti-air lasers become much less of a threat if Brainiac can hold his normal beta drone to punish her for her air laser, allowing Brainiac to close the gap. On the ground, Brainiac outfootsies her by a mile, and holding the beta bomb drone really shuts down her down one check and counter poke game. Starfire is one of the most solid zoners in this game ever since Deadshot's recent nerf. Starfire's projectile outdamages Supergirl's lasers, so every trade is a win when you have the life lead. Supergirl's projectiles are on a meter as well, so she's only limited to about 5 or 6 before she has to wait. Starfire, on the other hand, can fire as many projectiles as she wants, forcing Supergirl to stay back. An instant air trait from Starfire can cover all vertical space on the screen from any distance. It has a deceptively large hitbox. So air dashing will likely lead you back to where you started, taking almost 100 damage for your mistake. With Supergirl's trait being less effective, combined with her air mobility taking a serious hit in effectiveness, Starfire may actually take this matchup. Either way, Supergirl struggles. That much is certain. So now that you've gotten a basic idea on how the character plays with others, let's look at how to play the neutral as Supergirl. Supergirl is a very neutral heavy character, but her neutral play is fairly simple. Your neutral play is going to consist of a lot of projectile checks and air dashes used to close the gap or bait out any anti-airs or air to airs from your opponent. On the ground, your best footsie normals are your forward 2 and your back 1, both of which can be hit confirmed into full combos. In the air, your jump 1 and jump 2 are going to be for your cross up setups, jump ins, and air to airs. Your down 1 is an excellent tool depending on the matchup, but of course, the biggest neutral killer in your arsenal has to be your trait lasers. But let's take a look to see how to use each of these. An air dash from match start distance will land Supergirl in throw range to give you some kind of perspective on how far it travels. The air dash can be used from full screen to cover more ground safely. You can only air dash once, so combine the air dash with a float cancel to make it on your opponent from full screen. Make sure that when you do this maneuver to frequently condition with the lasers midair, but we'll get more into that later. The primary goal of the air dash is to either advance or retreat while providing safety from a ground assault, granting you the ability to make frequent checks with your trait. Once respect to the trait has been established, you can begin to bait your opponent's anti-airs and attempt cross-ups into your plus frames. Doing this sort of thing is pretty advanced and your reads have to be on point, but if you do an advancing jump into a backwards air dash, you may be able to get an anti-air out of someone and punish with a cross-up jump one into a full combo. Same logic goes for air-to-airs. Do a forward advancing jump into a retreating air dash and follow up with your laser. Or, if you're lucky, a jump one full combo punish on your opponent's whipped air normals. A lot of Supergirl's game relies around forcing her opponent to respect her lasers when she wants to make an approach. The best way to do this is, literally, just random lasers. Your lasers are knockdowns and travel across the screen very fast. They can be fired from any angle, and they do decent damage. Now of course, being completely random is not the most efficient way to use them. You'll want to use them when you think your opponent is going to start his forward progress and challenge your neutral. Understand your opponent's sweet spot range. It's the range where they're most likely going to come at you with a button or some other move to try to attack you. For instance, right around here is where you want to go hard with the lasers against Scarecrow, because this is the range his forward 2 and forward 1 will reach, meaning he's likely to straight up press a button on you. Now of course, if your opponent is doing the crouch walk in on you, and being very respectful, then you succeeded, and now is your chance to play on their impatience and bait out their mistakes, or go for your own plus frame slash mix up pressure to catch them off guard. When you're at full screen, you'll have to stick with your straight laser on the ground, or you could air dash in and go for an angled laser. Once your opponent enters around this range, you'll want to go for more mid-hitting downward angled lasers from the ground. Try to avoid having your mid-air lasers blocked, because that allows your opponent free time to close the gap in on you. Mid-air lasers take longer to recover from, so your best bet is to stick to the grounded lasers, unless you're very far away, or you're attempting to punish their impatience with an aerial laser. The downward angled laser can be jumped over, so make sure to read their jumps with an instant air laser or a teleport. The meter burn laser is a popular one that I frankly see used way too much. It hits mid and expends all of your trait meter. The thing about this one is that when you use it in the neutral, it doesn't do anything special compared to the straight laser, just the plain straight laser. Why use the meter burn laser and use all of your trait meter when you could just use one laser and get the same job done? 
the only times I would ever suggest using this version of the laser over the other ones is for chip out purposes. It does a good amount of damage on chip and is pretty hard to avoid since it covers the entire screen for quite a while. It does make for a good combo ender to your B&B &B, which we'll go over later. Other than that, there's not much of a reason to use this version of your trait. Keep that meter full unless you're chipping your opponent out or ending your combo in it. Remember, the whole goal of your laser offense is to condition them. Once they've been conditioned, make periodic checks with lasers and attempt to punish any impatience with them. Keep them conditioned the entire match. They're not there for the damage, believe it or not. Now once your opponent is properly conditioned, your neutral game plays a little different. Supergirl does have to go in on her opponent to get consistent damage on a respectful player. Make frequent checks with forward 2 and back 1, and your down 1 as Supergirl. All of these normals can be hit confirmed into combos and block confirmed into safety. You can also go for a 1-1-2 on a conditioned opponent. You can also go for a 1-1-2 on a conditioned opponent because they won't poke you out of the high for fear of getting hit by your down 1. Another cheeky tool to save for clutch moments is for teleport. It's usually more beneficial to commit to the meter burn version when using it though. It forces the opponent to block standing on their other side as opposed to crouching under the regular teleport that hits high. The meter burn 1 can also be comboed off of. Obviously, you don't want to keep doing this again and again because you'll eat their highest damage combo for having this blocked. Last tool to mention, her Kryptonian dash covers the distance of her normal dash and is practically invincible unless you get struck with a projectile. Make good use of this dash. It's only minus 4 and you can meter burn it to trade with any incoming projectiles for a full combo. I mean, just look how long this thing suspends you in the air for. Now, her neutral game does depend on the type of character she fights against. You simply can't fight a rushdown character like you would a zoner. Against a rushdown character, you want to make your laser checks more towards when they enter the range that your mid-downward angled laser covers, or their sweet spot range, whichever comes first. You don't want to be mashing laser from full screen, because that won't accomplish anything other than a whiffed laser or maybe 50 damage. It also makes them start to respect your lasers from full screen, making a teleport more risky. You want to make a rushdown character feel comfortable from full screen. Against a space control character or a defensive character, you want to get an early life lead and play lame for as long as possible. Make sure to send them as far away as possible with your combo ender, and start to zone and bait out their low mobility and impatience and punish them for it. Defensive characters typically lack high mobility, allowing Supergirl to capitalize from an early life lead. Against a zoner, you'll want to play your own mobility against them. Use the plethora of angles that you have at your disposal to make them think twice about the projectiles they throw. Also make sure to read their projectiles and punish with a full combo off of the teleport. Your lasers do pretty minimal damage, so it's best not to start trading projectiles with a stronger zoner, unless you have a healthy life lead. Now that we've covered her enormous amount of tools that she can use in the neutral, let's take a look at what she does when she finally gets in. It's not nearly as much as when she's playing the neutral, however. So now that you've conditioned your opponent into showing you some respect, we go and move in. We can use our 112 string to start off with plus frames. Of course, off of plus frames we have our classic overhead low mix-up. Supergirl is no 50-50 character, so these mix-ups are a little gimmicky, but will catch any player off guard from time to time. After 112, we can go for the old reliable throw. We can go for a quick down 1 in case they try to press buttons, or a meter burn back 3 to do an even better job at punishing any disrespect off of your plus frames. Once they've respected your plus frames, you can try a gimmicky sort of mix-up off of back 2. Back 2 1 plus 3 meter burn is an overhead that can be converted off of for some good damage. This overhead is pretty scary to most people, but is extremely punishable. So people are likely going to be looking to punish it by blocking high. As your low option, do back 2, but don't commit to the end of the string. Then follow up with down 1 that can hit or block confirm safely. This is a low that can be reacted to, but it's easy to catch your opponent overwhelmed by the lasers that they just forget that you also have a low starter as well. You could try back 2 throw as well, if they're respecting the overhead. After back 2, unless you're playing against someone with nerves of steel, they'll be very inclined to hold back to block your incoming overhead. If they're holding back, the teleport will probably catch them by surprise, allowing you to full combo. So yeah, that's a halfway decent 2 layer mix up with about 4 different options off of back 2. You could get away with back 2 in the neutral, but it's a little stubby, so it's better to try and go for 1 1 2 into back 2. Supergirl does maintain a good stagger off of her down 1. Her down 1 hits low, which is pretty scary combined with her neutral game and its combo potential. It starts up in 7 frames and is only minus 4 on block, meaning that you could easily get away with staggering it into breath. The pushback on it prevents it from being completely abused, but you can stagger it twice by the time your opponent moves outside of your range. Unfortunately, your throw range is among the worst, meaning you'll probably not get too many throw opportunities with your down 1 staggers, because you can get poked out of the throw. 
Now for your block confirms. Part of Supergirl being a space control character, she does have some safety gimmicks. Back 1 can be block confirmed into back 1, 2, 3, which is minus 4. You shouldn't really poke after this, which I see a lot of Supergirl players online go for. Your turn is over after the string is blocked. And your forward 2 can be block confirmed into forward 2, 3, back 4, which is labeled as minus 21, but clearly this is not minus 21, but only minus a few. Completely safe as you can see, with no gap being present. On hit, forward 2 can be confirmed into forward 2, 3, air throw, meter burned, to start off a combo off of the meter burn air grab. So those are the two solid block confirms in your neutral off of your footsie normals, allowing you to completely abuse them in the neutral. In regards to her setup game, Supergirl is not without any setups. 1-1-2 is a hard knockdown you can end your smaller combos with in order to create a cross-up setup off of your forward 3. Her forward 3 can hit it at multiple distances depending on which direction is held after forward 3 is executed. After 1-1-2, if a forward 3 is done and the forward input is held, the forward 3 will cross up. On the other hand, a forward 3 that is followed by the back input will not cross up. Now depending on when you use 1-1-2 as your hard knockdown, it can send your opponent in different directions, making it harder to tell whether the forward 3 will work or not, so you just have to experiment with it. This setup does have its flaws. If the opponent holds forward, when you go for the cross-up option, the forward 3 will whiff, opening you up for punishment. It can also be delayed out of, and woken up from, and back dashed out of. Supergirl isn't much of a setup character, but she does have this option in case you ever find yourself needing it. She also has a restand off of her 2-1-2 string, which you don't see used that much, mainly because it's neutral on hit. This means that after Supergirl recovers from the move, both characters are out of hit stun and recovery, meaning they can move at the exact same time. Supergirl lacks a 6 frame poke, meaning that a character with a 6 frame down 1 can poke her if she tries anything. But if your opponent is aware that they are able to push buttons, then a meter burn back 3 will stuff their move, allowing you to restart another combo. If your opponent is unaware that they are not actually plus, then you can use 1-1-2 one, one, for more plus frames when they respect you after the restand. Plus frames that you can turn into mix-ups, staggers, etc. as Supergirl. And one last thing, after some of her hard knockdowns, you can reverse your opponent's wake-up inputs by doing an air dash over their corpse. Sometimes you might get lucky and punish them for doing the wrong move on wake-up. As you can see, Netherrealm put more emphasis on Supergirl's neutral rather than her offense. But this doesn't mean that she's without offensive capabilities that lead her into high damaging combos. So let's take a look at how to defend from her neutral onslaught and her pressure up close. Defending against Supergirl in the neutral is a tricky endeavor. It all comes down to the type of character you play as, because character type does dictate how you perform in the neutral. Let's say you're a rushdown character, the Flash for example. The Flash is equipped with no projectiles, meaning Supergirl has free reign from this range, all until full screen. This is where you, as a rushdown character, have to play very patient. Don't get caught doing this crap and get greedy. Keep in mind that Supergirl does not build meter by just firing the lasers. That's not a problem you have to worry about. Just carefully walk your way in. If she's playing poorly and runs out of lasers, get in as fast as possible. But don't run straight into her back one range. If you block an air laser, that's a free dash for you. She isn't likely going to try and out footsie you on the ground because as a rushdown character, you beat her up close. Instead, she's going to try her float shenanigans and cheeky air dashes to try and catch you off guard. Her aerial playstyle is very bait heavy, so you have to be very careful when down 2 or air to airing her on a read. The best time to go for a down 2 or an air to air is at the end of her dash. You have to predict where her dash is going to end and punish her quickly. Make the read too late and you've been baited. Make the read too early and you run the risk of getting lasered back to full screen. It all comes down to your timing. Now if you're a character who happens to have a decent projectile and good control over the air, then your job is going to be making reads on her air dashes and try your best to punish any attempts she makes at taking flight. Now of course you're always vulnerable to teleport and her forward dash is very good. So again, it all just comes down to making the proper reads. Deadshot used to be a very serious counter pick to Supergirl just because of the reads that you can make with trick shot on her air mobility. Now Deadshot can't really make as many mistakes with his bullets anymore, rip Deadshot but the same principle still applies. If you can shut down her air game, she's just a watered down Aquaman with lasers. I'm sure everybody here has witnessed a debate between a Supergirl main and a more reasonable member of the community in regards to how good Supergirl is. Some of you may be familiar with the just learn the matchup, she's not that good joke, and it's a ridiculous argument, but there lies some helpful advice right there. Don't think you're going to go into a match with a good Supergirl player and win when you haven't labbed the matchup. I can't run through every character in this game and tell you the exact moves you can do in order to punish her, so that's your job. 
This may not be the best example, but Raiden can punish a blocked air laser, with some variation lying in how far away it was blocked and how high in the air she is, but he can punish it with Superman. Fine moves like this is what I'm getting at. How many times have you fought a Supergirl online and she comes in with this? Just punish her with the Superman, and now you've got her in the corner against Raiden of all characters. A running Man stands with Flash to go under the lasers from full screen, just be sure to cancel it in time. Stuff like that may seem simple, but go miles when fighting a character like Supergirl with no definitive weakness to exploit. Now in regards to her teleport, my best advice, and this may sound really lame, would be just to anticipate it. When you're up against a random Supergirl online, you've got to recognize some of the tells for when they'll try and throw out a teleport on you. Sometimes it's obvious, others not so much. The best time to look for a teleport is when they have no more lasers to use. That's usually when they'll try and throw it out there because online Supergirls have no idea how to play the neutral, so let's throw out this move that gets me from one side of the screen to the other in just a split second. Another one that baffles me, but I still see quite often, is they'll just hold still sometimes. Like they're waiting for me to move in just so they can catch me with a teleport. So if you ever see them holding still, watch out for the teleport. Another classic one is the full meter burn trait when they know for a fact it's not going to hit. Then they'll follow up with the teleport. And despite the teleport not being invincible at all, a lot of people will go for the teleport on wake up. The best way to counter this would be a media attack, which will punish her and allow you to convert. But when she mixes this teleport up with her DP, your media attack will end up being stuffed. So to do sort of a wake up option select against Supergirl, just back up and hold down to cover her DP and her meterless teleport on wake up. Now if she meter burns the teleport, you'll have to stand block it, which may seem awkward to a newer player to walk towards the opponent when their corpse is right in front of you, but it's how you block the teleport. Make sure to not let this go unpunished. The second you fail to punish it is the second that the Supergirl thinks it's okay to keep doing it, which increases the risk that you'll get hit by it in the future. So just make sure to read the patterns of teleport use when your opponent goes for one. Watch out for when their lasers deplete, when they hold still, after the meter burn laser, or on wake up. Everyone gets hit by stray teleports, even professionals. There's no need to feel discouraged by catching a random teleport from time to time. What you shouldn't think is that this character is broken because of her teleport, or this teleport is some unbeatable move that no one can get past. It's not. You just have to be ready for it. When she's getting in your face, remember to block low first, and react to her back two overhead string. That will take some practice getting used to. Supergirl being able to combo off of the overhead is just completely obnoxious in my opinion, but you just have to deal with it. The overhead comes out immediately after back two, so you have to be quick about stand blocking when she throws it out there. If you notice a bigger pause after back two, be careful of the possible low she might throw out. Also, back two is one of this character's throw setups, so be prepared to take a possible throw after back two. Same goes for after you block 112. Don't poke after 112, it's plus, and a good Supergirl will do a down one check and full combo you if you fail to respect these plus frames. So after 112, block low and be ready to tech an incoming throw. When it comes to her wake up, Supergirl doesn't really shine. The best way to deal with her actual wake up, the DP, is to just walk backwards. I find this works with any sort of DP wake up. Depending on the character you're up against, you might have to walk further back than usual, but a general rule of thumb is to backdash to punish DP wake ups. With Supergirls, you really just need to take a step back. If you're blocking her DP, then you're doing something wrong, because really I find it more effort to actually get hit by the thing than let it whiff. After letting it whiff, do your most damaging air to air normal and get a full combo off of it. Don't get hit by it and settle for a down 2 punish. Step back and hit her with an air to air for more damage. Supergirl can utilize float cancels on her jump ins to make higher damaging combos. What you as a defender have to look out for is when she does it on block. If she does any kind of float cancel like this after her jump in, anti air it immediately. Don't let her get started with it because if you're just a second too late, her second jump in will connect and you'll get comboed off of the teleport. Don't let her get away with this, she already has too many tools to use against you. If you get caught in one of Supergirl's mediocre setups, like she dashes over you to reverse your inputs, or goes for forward 3 as Oki, then just delay your wake up. These setups are designed to catch you not paying attention, and are not very solid in their design. If she does enter combo in 2-1-2 as a restand, remember if your character has a 6 frame poke, mash down 1 to stop her, because her down 1 is 7 frames. Other than that guys, there's really not much to mention in terms of how to defend against her. It all comes down to being respectful in the neutral, and being aware when she's negative and when she's plus. Make sure to get in as soon as possible when she runs low on lasers, because once she escapes, you have to go through neutral hell in order to reach her again, depending on the character. With that being said, let's take a look at professional Supergirl players, and maybe you can pick up on how they lose their matches in order to fully understand how to fight against them. 
Theo and Nivek are the top Supergirl players currently. Both of them have made it far in the tournaments in their respective locations, Nivek in the EU and Theo in the US. I'll be sure to leave links in the description to some good matchups from the two of them. So if any of you Supergirl players want to take your gameplay to the next level, I'd suggest taking a look at how Nivek and Theo control the neutral with these characters, and how they handle matchups against other top players in the community.
That's it for Supergirl, guys. I hope it helps. Please leave a comment regarding any future characters you would like to see. If there is any confusing terminology in this video, I'd like to refer you back to my tutorial series where I break down the fundamentals and the mechanics of the game. If you guys like what I'm doing in this series, spread the word. It really helps the channel out when I get something as seemingly small as one subscriber. I'll go ahead and put the current character analysis schedule on the screen right here to give you an idea on when your character will be up for analysis. As you can see, my next stop is Superman, then I'll be breaking down Scarecrow. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. Supergirl wins. Remember guys, there is no knowledge that is not power. And I'll see you next time where I'll be breaking down Superman.